Hi, I'm Sebastian. I'm a software developer here at Pessler. Today, I want to show you guys how you can create a custom template for Pessler Bitdecoder. You're going to need a custom template for a Pessler Bitdecoder if you don't find an existing one in the already vast library of existing templates. Okay, let's start creating a custom template for that little device. That's a Sensit 3. We already have a template for that in Bitdecoder, but this video is just a tutorial. So, what you're going to need is of course the device and the documentation. I have a printed version here, but we will also use a PDF. I have the PDF here and all manufacturers of all devices provide you some kind of PDF or documentation where you find the correct bits and bytes the device is sending when it's sending certain data. So let's start creating the template. So we click here, add new template. We will give it a name. We call it simply my Sensit V3. In this field, we can enter a test payload. And I already have here in Sigfox some good payloads the device has sent over the last hours and days. Here you can select what kind of template it should be. Should it be visual bit decoding, that's what I'm going to show you in the video, or should it be a custom JavaScript function? Custom JavaScript functions are for pros who can write their own JavaScript and place it here but we will stick to visual bit decoding for now. What you see down here is the JSON body preview. That's exactly that data which bit decoder will rely to the endpoints. At the moment it's an empty JSON body because we haven't defined anything. What we need to do is add a new group. A group is basically a group of bits forming a value and all values the device is sending is actually a group. And when we look here, you see, for example, the first thing we could decode is the battery level. So we name our first group battery level. And this one is a description. The description is for you. It will just come up in the UI and helps you to distinguish which group does actually what. This field denotes the name of the field which will end up in the JSON. So you can write a shorter name or something you want to have in your JSON body. Now we have an expression. The expression is basically some kind of mathematic formula which turns forms the actual bit value to something which is more meaningful. At the moment, I just type in bit value, which means just take the bits we have decoded. But where can I select the bits? Yeah, simply click here, select bits. And now we are in the bit selector field. So you can define how the bits are decoded. We have signed, unsigned, and IEEE floating point number. For now, we just leave it at unsigned. And if I go back to the payload structure in our documentation, you see that in byte zero, I have to select byte bit, sorry, seven, six, five, four, and three. And we're going to do the same here in bit decoder. So here you see exactly our payload. You see all the bytes we have entered before, that's just our demo payload, and you see the bits here. It's very important to start with the most significant bit. So I start with 7, 6, 5, 4. Was it 4? Ah, we need also bit 3 here. And I click Save Bit Selection, and you see we already calculated the bit value. 
but probably that's not the final value. And you scroll down, you will see that the battery level can be also noted as battery voltage, and that's the formula to it. So I need the battery level times 005 plus 2.7, and that's exactly what we are going to do here. So, times 00.5 plus 2.7. Now we have the voltage of the battery. You will see that the field calculated value for this group already updated. Update group, and you see we have one group now, we have this calculated value, and you see in the JSON body preview what will be sent to the endpoint. So, now let's decode another thing, for example, temperature could be interesting. So you see in the byte one, it says there is a, some kind of mode and there's a temperature MSB. And here in the byte two, we have a temperature LSB. So let's do it in Bitdecoder. Call it temperature, call it temp place bit value for now and we select the last two bits of byte 1 and all the bits of byte 2. So let's click here and I could click all the single bits here but it's a whole byte so I just click select whole byte and then you will see all the bits are selected. If you're asking, okay, how can I remove something? If I click here, I can also remove bits if I accidentally clicked a wrong bit. But we need all the bits. And the second thing, if you hover over the bits, you will see which bit it corresponds in the actual payload. So this is helpful for debugging as well. So we keep unsigned number. It looks good if we save the bit selection and we probably have to calculate the correct value as well and you see the calculation for that is temperature minus 200 divided by 8 so we do the same here and I say update group okay now we have two values decoded from our fancy little device, we have battery level and we have the temperature, which sounds great. But if you look at the documentation, you will see that temperature, brightness and some mysterious event count are all sharing the same byte and the same bit locations. That's because this little device can send you multiple data. It can send you temperature or brightness or magnet or motion or something. And you can switch the mode by pressing this button. So how we can do this in Bitdecoder? How we can distinguish between different modes? And that's where conditions come in. And I will show you how to use them properly. So as you see here in the byte one, those bits denote the operational mode of the device. You see mode 1 means temperature, 2 means light and so on. So in order to do that we add a new group, call it mode, we simply say that's the bit value and we select the bits corresponding for the mode. So it's bit 7 to bit 3 in byte number 1. So 7 to 3, that should be correct. Yes. We save it and we update the groups. Now you see we have three groups. We say battery level, temperature and mode. But temperature is only valid according to the documentation if the mode equals one. So how we can fix that? Just click here and say add a new condition. And conditions are exactly for that problem. So I can select mode, then I say equals, I, there are several operators here, but equals is enough for us, and I say 
1. And say update condition and now you see mode equals 1 is one of those conditions which must be met in order to decode the temperature value. It still decodes everything because the mode is number 1. I have another sensor device here and I copy this payload just for demonstration. And that one was, I think, in brightness mode. Yeah, it seems so. And you will see that the temperature is suddenly minus 25, which seems weird. But the reason for that is the bits, which are now denoting a brightness value, um, are in the same place as the temperature. But as the mode is now number two, we don't see it in the final JSON. So that's how you can create groups with conditions and react to device modes. Of course you can chain conditions and so create very, very complex templates which can react to various numbers of payloads. So in order to see that everything is working, I click on Save Template here, go over to my integrations, as you see, I already have an integration with that template to PRDG. I edit it and take my Sensit V3, click on Save. And then I can go to the Connectivity tab and click on this fancy test button we have here. And first send a valid payload. Oh, no. Let's first send the invalid payload, that's probably much better. Or oh, it's not an invalid payload, but it's a payload which doesn't decode the temperature. I say test connectivity. And you see, see PRDG has responded. And if you go to my PRDG, I should see some data. Yep. You see battery level, you see the mode, which is number two which is absolutely correct and if I send now the correct payload ah, and please note you only see battery level and mode so temperature is not sent at all because the mode was number two if I now send a payload with the mode set to number one you see battery level mode and temperature and all of this data should appear in PRDG yeah, and here it is. You see temperature is 22 degrees. This was template creation very quick and in a nutshell. But there is one last thing you should consider. So if you go down there, you see this little button, Publish Template. And if I click it, and I would say yes, this template will be part of the template community we built here in Pesla Bit Decoder. So if you have a very good template and want to share it with all other BitDecoder users, we encourage you to click yes here. But beware, if you do that, your template becomes a read-only template, so you cannot modify it anymore. Because if other users are depending on your template and you're making changes afterwards, you're probably breaking their integration. But you can always clone the template and edit that one. So I will show you. I say publish yes. And you will see my Sensit V3 is now a community template. And I cannot edit it anymore, I can just view it. But if I say clone template, it will create a copy, which is now again a private template, I can edit further. So please, share your templates, share your knowledge here at Pesla Bit Decoder, so everybody can simply integrate such great IoT devices in their favorite software solution. Thank you. I hope I was able to help you in creating a custom template for your special IoT device in Pesla Bit Decoder. If there is a feature missing, or you found even a bug, please don't hesitate and click the feedback button on the Pesla Bit Decoder website. Thanks for watching and see you next time.